Raise your hats and glasses too, we will see this video. Ooh, yes, hello everybody, what's new in life? I hope that everything's fine. And this Igor, Russian man who brings value through all my experiences. And uh, today we will go and watch uh, Jim Jefferies' airplane etiquette, full functional. Yes, thank you a lot for my viewer, you snow Eert, who recommended uh, hello to new th uh, new uh, th the Netherlands, yes. And hello for another countries, UK, US. India, maybe Canada, hello, Australia too, Australia, yes, uh, all congratulations to you. And uh, I'm Russian man and I l have been learning English for two years and I want to make it better, I want to improve our comprehension of listening, I want to make it... Uh, make it real, yes, and uh, we can do this together through watching this person, Jim Jefferies, it is a nice man, I, I think so. I watched his video already, one video, and it is second. Let's go, have fun. Let's tell some stories. Yeah. Let's tell some stories. This first story, the first bit of this story you should already know. In the same way that you know things like, don't kill people, try not to rape. <laughs> When you're on an airplane, there's a... Again, he said uh, rape. Rape. <laughs> Things like, don't kill people. Try not to rape. Try not to rape. Okay. I heard like, uh, don't kill people, try them to rape. <laughs> it's only caught. When you're on an airplane, there's a thing called plane etiquette. And it goes like this. Window gets an armrest and a wall. Middle gets two armrests. Isle gets an armrest and a little bit of extra leg. We're not fucking animals, we live in a society. Is it he speaking about this etiquette that uh, every person on plane has their on a plane has their own uh, benefits, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, like someone will have this uh, illuminator window, some will have ASL uh, I don't know, stick to the left hand and some has uh, kind of uh, center position to overview everything, okay? So I was on a flight from Los Angeles to Houston and I had the middle seat and that sucks balls. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with two armrests. Next to me is a petite young lady, she's doing her job, armrest wall, I'm in the middle, two armrests. Sitting next to me here is a great big black man who's as gay as the day is long. He sits down next to me and we do the niceties. Hello, hello. And then with no issue whatsoever, he sees my elbow there and he just went, chock, and I went. <laughs> now I'm pretty upset, but he's a big fucking guy and it's a long flight, so there's no need to get into an argument. So I have that argument that you have in your head where the other person doesn't know you're having an argument. <laughs> where you're like, you're a fucking asshole. And if you said this, then I would say, well, good, sir, I think you're mistaken. Right? <laughs> the same thing it is in a cinema theater. When you see it uh, in a cinema theater and someone on the left and uh, they placed their hand on this elbow, elbow stand and uh, it is not super uh, like comfortable because you should sit here or there and it is more uncomfortable if both people from right and trend, uh, left try to do the same. It, it feels like you're so narrowed. But it is our choice of our life because it is not like a business class. So I sit there festering for like 45 minutes and eventually the air stewardess comes with a drink cart. Now why I'm on air stewardesses, right? Whenever you watch a movie set in the 60s and they show air stewardesses or an old TV show, that show like Pam Am or something, they always depict air stewardesses as these hot young things with a pillbox hat and a little bun and big tits and a small waist and holding a bag going, like that. I don't think any of those women have retired. <laughs> retired means that they uh, go away from this job. <laughs> this, this thing was just being propped up by the drink card. <laughs> 50 years of recycled air had made her skin drip off her skull like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> she comes up. The guy reaches over for his drink and his pretzels, armrest open, bang! I'm back in. 
and I'm not fucking going anywhere either. He puts all of his things down in his tray and he goes to put his elbow back, but he fucking can't, can he? He can't, because there's a wall there called Jim Jeffries and he can't fucking move it, right? And he's pushing, he's pushing, and I'm acting like I can't feel it like this, but casual like, like. <laughs> then he gets his fist like this and his hand like that, and he's pushing really hard back, and I'm trying to do that casual. But he's much bigger than me, and eventually I have to give in. I just went, chock. So I turned to him and said what needed to be said. Why are you such a cunt? <laughs> now, I understand that that word in this country isn't as popular as maybe it should be. <laughs> People were freaking the fuck out. They were going, he did, he just said it, I heard him say it. Called that man a sea bomb. I heard him say it, Bob. <laughs> Called the man a sea bomb, Bob. Sea bump. And he was shocked as well. He turned to me and went, "Excuse me, why did you just call me? But in for a penny, in for a pound, right?" And I was there going, "A cunt, sir." Like a, a he speaking like a pirate right now. I called you a cunt. And he said, are you upset because you're trying to take my armrest? And I went, you don't know plain etiquette. Window gets an armrest in a wall. Middle gets two armrests. Aisle gets an armrest and a little bit of extra leg. We're not fucking animals. We live in a society. By the way, I want to make sure that he's Australian to make my uh, speech. Australian, yes, stand-up comedian. Thank you for uh, your comment about this. And... Uh, about Jim Jefferies, Jim Jefferies uh, sounds like a pirate. I, a pirate. I think that all Australian accent sounds sound like pirates, but it is uh, more understandable than uh, British uh, Manchester and British uh, Cockney accents. I want to say it is easier to understand to pick words. And the people that initially hated me agreed with me, like, he is right about that. That is true. <laughs> that is true. We do live in a society. <laughs> and he went, oh, I'm only taking the back of the armrest. You can have the rest of the armrest. And I went, you take the back, you take the whole fucking thing. No one gives a fuck about the front of the armrest. No one's ever gone, thanks for the front of the armrest. <laughs> I said, it's not just that you're taking my armrest. Your elbow has come over the armrest and it's digging into my rib cage. And he said, well, maybe if you lost some weight. I know. <laughs> I, was, I was gobsmacked. I didn't know what to fucking say. I just turned to him and went, you bitchy queen. <laughs> Now everyone on the plane has lost their fucking shit. The movie, the movie can fuck off, mate. No one's watching the fucking movie. I'm the entertainment now. The air stewardess comes running back on her walker. She comes up to us and she goes, what's going on here? And I said, I want this fucking asshole away from me. And she said, sir, this is not the situation to be swearing in. I went, yes, it is. We're having a fight. And she went, well, there's no need for name calling. I called the guy Bitchy Queens. I sort of get what she's saying. What is Bitchy Queens for Queens? And I turned to her and said, you know what? You're right. There is never a need for name calling. But <laughs> as a proud gay man myself, <laughs> I feel like I've earned the right to say such words. So. Like it was accident in an airplane because of armrest, uh, and uh, Jim Jeffries didn't have armrest, and it was uncomfortable, and he decided to call someone uh, not really nice uh, with a not really nice word, and then s the stewardess that we were on a plane, she said that don't need to use them because uh, 
it is not super polite, not our etiquette. And uh, then he started to talk about etiquette, about that everybody has their armrests, yes? And uh, this stewardess was old, yes? Almost retire retirement ages. It is what I understood. She apologized. <laughs> the gay guy knows I'm fucking lying. <laughs> He's fagging the fuck out, just... <laughs> and the answer is, can everyone calm down? What's the problem here? And he went, he's trying to take my armrest. And the issue is when everyone knows the middle gets two armrests. <laughs> and I went, see? She goes, I'm going to have to break you two up. And she points to the man and said, sir, you're going to have to find a seat at the back of the plane. I'm... He went to, to the back of the plane. Victorious. I stand up. I bash my head on the thing. <laughs> I point at the man. And I went... Get to the back of the plane! <laughs> now like girl said that uh, Jim Jeffries will find a place in the back of a plane, like Jim should go to the back. And then he stand, stood up and uh, make, make it different. He said to this fat man to do this. Now a lot of people on that plane hadn't seen the rest of the argument. All they have seen is me pointing at a black man, yelling, get to the back of the plane. <laughs> Things got real awkward real fucking quick. <laughs> I didn't know what I'd done yet. People were yelling at me, calling me a racist, and I was like, I know, but how do you know? <laughs> I understood. I started to understand uh, racist uh, jokes. Not like a racist, but uh, with some of kind of black people issues. Because in Russia we don't have black people. We have uh, almost 500 of them. And it is uh, hard to understand uh, black people jokes because you can't relate to this. And the more you listen about the stories, the more you can relate. Because because you are fulfilled with it. You are diving inside of it. And a guy threw a bag of peanuts at the back of my head and said, sit down, you limey bastard. And I was like, that's the British. I'm Australian, you fucking racist. <laughs> Which would have made a lot of sense if being British or Australian was a race and not a nationality. <laughs> but at that stage, I was clutching at straws, really. So, I go sit back down in his old chair. We got the empty seat between us, me and the girl pounded out. <laughs> now, later on the flight, I'm walking up the back of the plane to the toilet. And I want to see the guy, because I want to go. <laughs> and I like doing grimaces. Get all the way to the back of the plane, I don't see him anywhere. I'm about to go in the toilet, and then I see his leg around the corner. There were no more seats. This is a full flight. He's sitting in the air stewardess's landing seat that folds down with a seat belt over the top like he's in a fucking go-kart. What need to turn on our, our subtitles? Down with a seat belt over the top like he's in a fucking go-kart. Go-kart. What is go-kart? Go-kart. Go-kart meaning... Ah, like a small, a small racing car with a lightweight of s or a skeleton body. Okay. I put my head around the corner. I went, "No armrest here, dickhead." <laughs> and the extra just went, "You get back to your seat," and I ran away like a child, like <laughs> <laughs> like SpongeBob. So, for learning, I go sit back down in his old seat. Now, the Astro's seat is taken, so she's taking my old seat in the middle, and she fucking hates me. And I'm taking both armrests, fuck her. <laughs> and as we're landing, a guy over the aisle leans over and goes, excuse me, you're Jim Jeffries, right? 
And I'm like, yeah, man, how you doing? And he went, I had no idea you were gay. <laughs> what? Went, I had no idea you were gay. I'm like, yeah, man, how you doing? And he went, I had no idea you were gay. Didn't understand. Fucking <laughs> yeah, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, I like cock. <laughs> something about gay or uh, something I, I didn't understand, sorry. Last words I didn't understand. The most funny, funniest moment was uh, like you could uh, notice. It was in a moment when he pointed in a black man uh, and uh, said that, Need, hey man, go to the back of this plane. It is like a go out of my swamp Shrek moment. Almost. Yes. And uh, I think it was uh, a hilarious stand up uh, a bit, a bit of it. And uh, we can look at more videos like this. I will watch about Jim Jefferies more. And uh, have a wonderful day. Have, uh, have nice moments in your weekend. Uh, Today is 18th, oh no, 11th of October. And uh, tomorrow will be 12th. Uh, Monday will be to new days, new possibilities, opportunities. And if you want, you can join to our channel by clicking subscription and uh, like button. Right now I'm reading post office almost ended to understand Charles Bukowski, to understand more of, um, of vocabulary, of what's inside of stand-up, because Charles Bukowski is more writer, is a more writer of uh, stand up linguistics. I mean, that with this uh, trash, rubbish language sometimes, with uh, specific jokes about uh, contacts with uh, Tommy Banana, uh, Tommy Banana, and uh, twin Twinkle Star, tw Twinkle Caves. Yes, and uh, ab about uh, different types of swear words to, to understand it better. How they use it in a way of reading yes and here is we are practicing our our comprehension of listening thank you a lot for watching have a wonderful day i i understand that my english is improving daily and uh, i can do this better and better each single day i can improve it and uh, in the final moment maybe i will understand uh, whole types of jokes and I will go. F I will go further. Maybe I will read my own book. Maybe some own jokes. And uh, it was really nice. Have a wonderful day.